Hey everyone, welcome back to the plotting series. Today I'm going to show you kind of a holistic approach now to making multiple plots based on some changing inputs. The goal here is going to be to create, maybe let's just say 10 different plots using a for loop. We're going to loop through each thing, make a new plot, we'll end up with 10 different figures, each containing a different plot. Let's get into it. This is more of a case study rather than just learning topics but it's a cool way to combine concepts here from different areas. So it's gonna to be totally separate from what we've done previously. Let's just start a new section here and close all. Okay, I want to plot different Y curves. We're gonna do X equals negative 10 to 10. And our Y equation will be varying. Okay, so each time we plot, we're gonna get a different Y equation. Let's not define that thing because it's going to change within our for loop. Let's do for i equals 1 through 10, or sorry, i equals 1 through the length of x. And that really quick, so we've got that format. And I want to produce 10 different plots. So the first thing I'm going to do then in this is figure. That'll automatically create a new figure. If I just run this part right now, I should end up with 10 separate figures. There's 1, 2, 3, yeah, exactly as I thought. Okay, so we've got all the figures we could ever ask for. I want each of these to have a plot on them, so I could just do plot x, and that would just plot the x data on all of these figures. Okay, so we're, we're getting progress here. I wanted to find a new y. So y will equal, it's gonna depend on x. At the end of the day, we'll just keep it x squared as we've been doing in this plotting series. It'll be a changing coefficient of x. I'm gonna call it c. c times x squared. Well, what is c, right? This is what's gonna change in each of our for loops. I'm going to define a matrix called c, and this would be values that we simply wanna see in the x squared curve. How about values from negative four to four? And now in this case, we don't actually wanna go over all the x values, we wanna go over all the c values because the c values are what are changing in each loop. And we're gonna change this to c of i. So what's gonna happen in each loop? We're gonna grab this c of i value because i will start at one, the first value c of i, c of one will in fact be negative four. It'll go all the way through creating these different y's and we're gonna plot x, y each time. You follow what we're doing here? Let's take a look at the plot. I'm gonna suppress the output here, and let's see. So this plot is gonna be negative four x squared. This plot will be negative three x squared, negative two x squared, negative x squared, zero, perfect. Great way, <laughs> makes us know that it worked because this plot should just be all zeros. x squared, 2x squared, 3x squared, 4x squared. But those weren't very depictive, right? These, if you just look at this curve, I don't know what this is a plot of at all. So it'd be really nice is if we added plot features throughout that made this very clear. Let's start with the basics that we know, x label being x and y label being y. The title would be a good one that could change, right? We just don't wanna label this as squared curve. Well, what square is it, right? We know what it is. It'll start off as negative four X squared. So let's make that the title. Let's do Y equals, and then we want this C value to be inputted here. Now this is gonna change every time. So what I'm gonna do is create a title string and we're gonna use the string cat function. Now the string cat function will take in a bunch of strings side by side and make them into one string. And when you're doing this, be sure to use string notation, which is double apostrophes and not individual character notation, which is single apostrophes. You can use both, but there's advantages to using the strings and that it doesn't get rid of white space. Let's see this in action now. I want y equals some value times x squared. We're gonna leave this blank for now, and then I'm gonna add x squared at the end. If we can fill this in, we'll end up with something like 
y equals negative 4 x squared. Right, this is what we want, but this value right in the middle, this blank is what's changing every time. We're going to use the num to string function, and we're going to take the number ci and convert it to a string and then combine it with this y equals and the x squared here. Let's see how this works. Well, we didn't change it in our title here, but if we look in the command window, you can see now that each time we go through this loop, we're getting these strings that are changing. And now we can make these our title. So y equals right down here, this title. Let's just give it title string. Boom. Suppress this output, run this, and now we're getting each title to be appropriately labeled for each of these curves. This is awesome. You can see how important this is when you're plotting a lot of things. So many plots. <laughs> and then we can add the grid on as well. That's basically it. That's all I wanted to show you in this video is how to get an idea of using these plottable for loops now and then changing those certain commands that we need. Now num2string, that's a useful one to look up here, num2string. Again, that'll take in a number and then give you out a string. So we're taking in the number that's ci and converting it to a string. And then string cat is concatenating these strings by putting them into from three separate strings into one common string that we can then use for our title. You can do this with the x-axis labels, y labels, anything that's taking these purple inputs, text strings, characters, you can use this num to string and these string cat functions on. Very useful. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.